Now, the Kill Leroy hate, definitely a conversation that's very relevant right now, and you probably know that if you've been paying attention to the response he's been receiving as an artist these past few weeks. So, yeah. Let's talk about it. Now, The Kid Leroy, an extremely new face in the game, a 17-year-old Australian rapper slash singer who's been making his way up in the industry rather quickly. Leroy is definitely an interesting case, man, and I touched on this briefly on a video I made on him a couple weeks ago, but I sense that he's gonna be one of those artists who ends up going in that Post Malone route in the future. From what I've seen, he's actually already on it, and I'm saying that because the initial label that was stamped on him was a rapper. That also happened with Posty when he first came out, and then now, that perception is shifting a little bit. People are simply not so quick to call him a rapper, which does make sense considering how his music is actually sounding, specifically as an example, So Done and Without You. That's relevant because these are his two biggest records at this very moment. It's one of those things where your biggest records, aka the songs the most amount of people find you through, can a lot of times dictate how the masses categorize you from an artist's perspective. Anyway, regardless of that specific conversation though, Leroy is hands down one of the hottest new artists in the industry right now. The guy's getting streamed like crazy at the moment has, like I said, two records out right now that are doing insane numbers. He just has a lot of force behind him, and yes, that force for sure involves label support because he is a signed artist. Now, over two months ago though, we saw him getting a lot of backlash for that Reminds Me of You record that came out. Like I stated in my video I made about this, the track dropped on the one year anniversary of Juice World's passing, which rubbed a lot of people the wrong way because why drop it on that day to take the attention away from Juice's anniversary just to promote this record? Like expected, Leroy received a lot of backlash since he was the face of this collab considering the fact that Juice isn't here, right? So the only person to blame? Leroy. My take on this was and is, I don't blame him for it because I know that there's only so much a 17 year old has in terms of leverage when he's signed to a label. The label is gonna do what the label wants to do. If they see an opportunity to capitalize on whatever, as long as it kind of makes sense, they're gonna do it. Despite the backlash though, the outcome of that record was a good one. I think it was genuinely a dope sound record and that's why despite the negative feedback he received, it ended up fairly successful. Now, back in December, I made a video on The Killer Roy surpassing Lil Uzi Vert in terms of monthly listeners on Spotify. This became a heavily discussed topic on social media after Rap posted this on their Instagram. That then led to everyone giving their take on it, and there was that. But why was The Killer Roy surpassing Lil Uzi Vert such a big deal? I'm gonna be honest, I don't think it was really a big deal. I just think everyone made it a big deal because people don't realize that despite Uzi being such an established name in a rap game, Game, he's obviously not immune to being surpassed for now by Leroy who like I said earlier in the video is one of the hotter acts out right now. I don't think this says anything about Uzi, I don't think this says anything about Leroy. It simply is what it is. That conversation then transitioned into another conversation and that is who exactly is listening to the Kid Leroy? How is this guy who blew up in quarantine not only surpassing guys like Lil Uzi Vert but how is he doing these kinds of numbers man? That is a really great question and the answer to that a lot of people are listening to The Killer Roy right now. This right here goes hand in hand with The Killer Roy as an artist. Is he a good artist? Is he a bad artist? Why do people like him? Why do people not like him? Let me speak for myself because that's all I can do. There's a couple things about his material that I don't like. On the other hand, there's also a couple things I do like, which is why I have a couple of his songs on repeat. But here's the thing, man. I've personally never understood the concept of not liking an artist and recognizing that other people do. These are two things that kind of collide because there's a big difference between liking and recognizing. You don't have to like something to recognize why it's great to other people, which is why I think there's been so much negativity thrown his way. It is a little more complicated than that though, so let me elaborate. A couple weeks ago, someone on Twitter put up a post that went kind of viral. I responded to it and I'll leave a link to it in the description below just in case you want to check it out. If you don't, I'll explain what I said on this video, don't worry. But the post was a screenshot of the Kid Leroy's monthly Spotify listeners, which at the time was around 25 million. That number has jumped to 27 million as you you can see from the screenshot on the screen, but apart from his monthly listeners, the Fake and A Streams lyrics from A Lot by 21 Savage and J. Cole was attached as well, just in case for some strange reason you don't know the lyrics. Let me recite them really quickly. How many Fake and A Streams can they place for machines? I can see behind a smoke and mirror, niggas ain't really big as they seem. The Fake and Streams part is in the focus here. The tweet I'm referring to pretty much said, J. Cole had a point, this is getting out of hand, and then Leroy's numbers were posted along with the quote from A Lot. This was another heavily discussed 
best moment and then out of nowhere boom Kendrick was brought into the conversation because people started posting Kendrick's monthly listeners since Leroy is now beating KDOT on that aspect. Right here you have a screenshot of Kendrick's monthly listeners on Spotify and as you can see it's in at 25 million. My response to the whole faking his streams thing he's undeniably one of the hottest new artists in the industry right now these numbers make complete sense. Continuing though there are a handful of reasons why Spotify monthly listeners don't really mean anything. Actually let me contradict myself for a second. Yes they mean something but they don't mean as much as you would think. And just for the record what I'm gonna talk about next doesn't necessarily apply to Leroy and you're gonna see why right now. Spotify monthly listeners don't really tell us much about how many actual fans you got meaning can you sell out a venue with the strength of your name and your name only. That's what we call hard tickets. How many hard tickets can you sell and not how many streams can you get. Loyal fans who are gonna show up for you are really the end all be all and the reason why I said this doesn't apply to Leroy well because like I briefly mentioned earlier he blew up in quarantine which means he hasn't toured which means he can't be judged on this aspect. Although let me speak prematurely and say that I think he's gonna do great whenever touring as an artist is possible again simply because he has a pocket he's owning right now and I always mention that pocket thing throughout all my videos when I'm talking about different artists and that's because it is a very much real thing. This goes hand in hand with your music being in demand which when it comes to Leroy it absolutely is since he's really popular right now. You can be not in demand and be popular at the same time. These are two things that go against each other. Although let me play devil's advocate just because you're popular that doesn't automatically guarantee that people will go out of their way to purchase a concert ticket to one of your shows. The same exact logic could be applied to all the people who watch my videos but forget to hit that like button. I just caught you slipping huh? Also another thing I want to clarify really quickly what exactly is Spotify monthly listeners and how is it measured? I think it's really important to clarify this because this has been such a big aspect of this entire conversation. According to Spotify themselves this is how they explain that monthly listeners are unique listeners who play your music during a 28 day period and then they also clarify by saying two important things to clarify about your monthly listeners. They've listened within a rolling window of 28 days. We use our rolling window of 28 days because the number of days in a calendar month can vary and because people listen to music differently depending on the day of the week. This means an equal number of days of the week are included so the same number of Mondays, Tuesdays, Wednesdays, etc. And then last but not least one of the most important things regarding how monthly listeners actually work. These are unique listeners. If someone plays your music in a 28 day period they only get counted once. That's so important to know because people think streams and monthly listeners are the same thing when they're really not. Regarding how streams are counted though this is how Spotify explains that. Streams are counted in Spotify for artists when a song is streamed for over 30 seconds. Your total streams include all songs where you're accredited as a main artist or remixer. Now that we got that out of the way Leroy's monthly Spotify listeners being higher than Kendrick's doesn't say anything at all. What I can tell you about this is the fact that here's a guy who's dropped a bunch of material in 2020 is an extremely popular artist right now has two songs that are extremely successful has an abundance of the most valuable thing any artist could have right now which is attention. On the other hand when was the last time Kendrick dropped a solo album? Well damn near four years ago. The disconnect here is comparing and being surprised that a new artist in the industry is surpassing someone who we all know is more than great Kendrick in monthly listeners when that doesn't really mean much at the end of the day anyway since the man Kendrick hasn't dropped a solo project in almost four years. When it comes to the crazy amount of Leroy hate though the core of it all comes down to number one he's a new artist in the industry and not only is he a new artist in the industry but he's also risen extremely quickly. Why is something like this leading to him getting hate though because blowing up fast does not equate to getting hate let's get that out of the way. I'd say this is unique to Leroy because this is where Juice World comes in. Leroy got so much backlash for that Juice collab simply because fans felt like Juice's passing was being used to push Leroy forward as an artist. Now where exactly does the blowing up quickly comment I made come in? Well it comes in right here because the Kill Leroy's blow up was almost a little bit too convenient in relation to Juice being gone which gives the perception of an industry plan. So we started with he's risen extremely quickly to is the label using Juice World's name to push Leroy to his blow up was too convenient and then the last point which is is he an industry plan? These are the kind of questions people are asking right? This is why he's not only getting a lot of hate but this is why people are surprised about his streams being so high him passing both Uzi and Kendrick and then this is when the who's listening to the Killer Roy questions start popping up. Let me tell you why I think the Killer Roy will end up just 
is fine despite the fact that he's facing this crazy hate train, the Killer Roy is the kind of artist who in the future, arguably even right now, is gonna be completely independent of the validation from hip hop. This is the same thing Post Malone went through, which is why I've been using this comparison between him and Leroy, but remember how Posty came in a game wearing braids and rocking gold grills? He caught a lot of initial backlash for that, people were saying he was a culture vulture, all that. That was only in the beginning of his career though, because later Post Malone went so global to the point where that obstacle became a thing in the past. Lori is obviously not wearing braids or rocking gold grills, but the point I'm trying to make is, I use him as an example by the way, because in a couple years, I think he's really gonna solidify himself as more of a pop star than a rapper just like Post Malone. It all comes down to the music man, and I think Leroy has, whether it's unknowingly or strategically, set himself up to shoot for the moon by low-key leaving that rapper label behind him. Not saying he won't be really rapping in the future, but what I'm trying to say is, he might have started off being one, and most importantly of all, might have started off being recognized as a rapper but that rapper label is not really what the future has in store for him. There are so much more success for him to acquire with songs like Without You that's not necessarily a rap song, right? I say that to say, if he reaches that crazy pop star status in the future, which I actually think he will because he started off on an extremely strong note, the Killeroy hate will be, and I repeat, will be a thing of the past. But yeah, the Killeroy hate. I had a couple things to say about this entire conversation, as you could hear, but enough of me. What do you think about this entire topic? Number one, what do you think about all the negative feedback we've seen in response to Leroy as an artist? And number two, what do you think about his music? Definitely let me know in the comment section below and we'll have a discussion about this.